success in stifling liberty and Tea Party groups where Christians are predominant, prior to the 2012 election, the IRS and the militant atheist Freedom from Religion Foundation reached an agreement in July to monitor churches and other houses of worship for electioneering. This is for the renegade IRS and these atheists. A violation of First Amendment freedom of speech plus freedom of religion, but political issues like same-sex marriage, abortion, sanctity of life, or even taxes are biblical as well as political issues, and should the IRS be telling us how to talk about these issues in our churches? Continued government persecution of Christians living their faith like the Colorado cake baker who's persecuted and fined for refusing to bake a wedding cake for a gay wedding at the couple who runs Ellen Photography ordered to pay $6,637 in fees because they refuse to photograph a same-sex ceremony with their religious faith disagrees with. In this photography case, New Mexico Supreme Court Justice Richard Bosson claimed that requiring the couple to relinquish their religious convictions was the price of citizenship. And there are more examples. Schools that cave to threats of expansive lawsuits from atheist groups and are intimidated into telling students not to mention God or Jesus in graduation speeches, banning Christian clubs from meeting after class, forbidding prayer from football games and other activities, and scrubbing every mention of the baby in the manger from what was Christmas and is now the winter solstice events. If Christians voted in greater numbers for principled Christian leaders, from school boards to senators, these abuses of our religious liberties would cease. Here's what George Washington had to say about it. He said, I earnestly pray that the omnipotent being who has not deserted the cause of America in the hour of its extremist hazard will never yield. Washington and the founders had enough of dipotism. It's the reason they revolted against England. From the beginning, ours is the only nation in the world to ever declare its functioning documents that the fundamental right came from God and not government or a king. Anyone who doubts America's foundation as a Christian nation only has to read the Declaration of Independence, written by Thomas Jefferson, who liberals actually claim as an unbeliever. The Declaration calls upon the deity three times at the end of the Declaration, a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, another word for God at the time. I wonder if some Christians have a contentious objection to voting because they see Jesus as more involved in the next world than in this one. Jesus said he came into the world to change it. And that requires some aggressive, worldly action, such as taking the whip to the corruption of the moneylenders in the temple. Jesus was a very political person. He boldly confronted the government of his time, the Jewish and religious leaders of the Sanhedrin ruling council, He engaged in civil disobedience, and he strongly criticized these rulers for ignoring the people and caring more about themselves. If he could have voted, he probably would have voted to throw the Sanhedrin out. A lot of Christians may think there's no need to vote because the Lord is coming through the clouds to sweep us out of here and into his holy presence. But Christians have believed this ever since Jesus departed through those same clouds over 2,000 years ago. Christ himself told us nobody knows the day or the hour, but this guessing game seems to continue. Other Christians believe that since God is in control, we should stand by passively and let God work things out. But if the Christian founders of this nation would have believed this misinterpretation of Scripture, they would never have revolted against England which was the mightiest power of their time. They did it in order to establish a new nation, one that would give its citizens unique privileges, freedom of religious belief, freedom of thought, freedom to worship, freedom to speak out against rulers and oppression. All of these are under fire today. Keeping those freedoms means being the light of the world, as Jesus instructed the believers to do. It means voting on November 4th. You have an obligation, not only as a Christian, but as an American, to go in there and vote on November 4th. To stand by is to do nothing. For those people, for those Christians who say, all we can do is pray about it, it's all in God's hands. Well, what did he tell us about that? We are his hands. 
We as Christians are here to do His work. You and I are His hands. Do His work. You are obligated to vote. Because I'll tell you what, if we don't get these people out of office, if we don't straighten this system out, the America we know and love and was set up by our founding fathers, the greatest nation in the world, is going to cease to exist. Thank you for listening to my rant. Because, as usual, when the dust settles and the smoke clears, I'll see you on our next episode. You can email me at contact at wdeanshook.com. The webpage is wdeanshook.com. Facebook and Twitter, wdeanshook. If you don't like what I said, send me an email. Come on Twitter. Come on Facebook. Let's hear your argument. I'll see you on our next program. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you at the polls. You can get these full stories and more at wdeanshook.com. That's wdeanshook.com.